Maniac Mansion is one of the most ambitious adventure games for the NES. You'll explore the titular mansion with a team of kids chosen from amongst the game's seven unique characters. You'll carefully avoid the creepy residents of the house while searching for the tools you need to rescue Sandy and defeat the evil Purple Meteor. Maniac Mansion was developed by LucasArts, a studio that is probably more famous for making Star Wars games. Back in the 80s, however, Atari held the license to make games based on the Star Wars movies, so LucasArts got their start designing their own creative properties. They made a handful of games like Ball Blazer and Rescue on Fractalus, but Maniac Mansion was the first game they both developed and published themselves. The game was originally designed for the Commodore 64 and Apple II computers, and it revolutionized the adventure game genre. Early games like Zork, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, or King's Quest used a command line system where players could type in actions like look, use, or get to work out the puzzles in the game. The developers of Maniac Mansion instead converted these commands into actions that could be chosen from a simple point-and-click menu. It may not seem like a big deal today, but streamlining the interface made Maniac Mansion much more intuitive to play and allowed it to be ported to platforms that didn't have a computer keyboard, like the NES. Maniac Mansion was LucasArts' first game for the NES, so to publish it, they worked with Jellico, the company that brought us the Bases Loaded series, Shatterhand, and Pinball Quest. Jellico informed LucasArts about Nintendo's strict censorship policy. A young LucasArts programmer named Douglas Crockford volunteered to oversee completion of the project. Crockford didn't have much on his resume at the time, but would eventually go on to be involved in the development of the JavaScript programming language. In his memoir, Crockford recounts how they carefully worked to remove any potentially offensive materials from the game before sending it to Nintendo for approval, but their first submission was still rejected. Nintendo insisted on several changes, including removal of the text, For a Good Time, that was scrawled on the wall of a bathroom, a tastefully nude statue, and even a pinup poster depicting a mummy completely covered in bandages. Allowing the player to put a live hamster in the microwave to blow it up, however, was totally fine and made it into the final game. Even more baffling, Nintendo actually published pictures from the beta version in Nintendo Power, their own magazine. All of the censored images that they asked to be removed are in there. The game was a hit for LucasArts when it released in North America in 1990, and while it didn't appear on the NES, they did make a sequel called Day of the Tentacle, which released on PC in 1993. As a further testament to the game's popularity, Maniac Mansion was even developed into a live-action sitcom for TV. The show was produced by The Family Channel and follows the antics of the Edison family from the game. It ran for three seasons, which seems fairly impressive for a show based on a video game. It was actually created by Canadian comedy writer Eugene Levy, who would later earn a Primetime Emmy Award for his role on the critically acclaimed Schitt's Creek. In modern times, Maniac Mansion is still appreciated for its unique place in NES history. When IGN released their list of the top 100 NES games of all time, they ranked Maniac Mansion at number 61. Modern gamers that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. Unlike many other point-and-click adventure games, your characters can be permanently killed, taking all of their items with them. It's definitely possible to mess up so badly that you'll have no chance of completing the game. But what if I told you everything you need to do to win the game with any combination of characters? What if I told you a secret trick to freeze Nurse Edna in place so you can freely explore her room? And what if I told you how to get all of the game's many different endings, 
both good and bad? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any new episodes. Let's get started. Alright, Maniac Mansion. As we get started, we need to choose two additional kids to accompany Dave on his quest to rescue Sandy. We have to choose Dave, although he doesn't have any unique abilities. But one kid that we don't want to choose is Jeff. Jeff's unique ability is that he can fix the phones, and fixing the phones is not really important at all. You can easily finish the game without ever fixing the phones. And Jeff doesn't have any abilities that will get him through the purple tentacle at the end. So if you want to beat the game with Jeff, you are going to be leaning pretty hard on whatever the third person you choose is. Now Bernard, on the other hand, also can fix phones, but in addition to that he can fix the radio, which will let him get a special ending. Wendy also has a unique ability, she can rewrite the Meteor's manuscript, and with Wendy we can also get a special ending. We can actually get several special endings with her. With this team, we can see any of the game's different endings, and there's even a special one that can only be seen if you choose this exact team. We will be looking at the other characters, and I will show you how to win the game with them. But if you want to see all the endings, this is the team to choose. Well, if anyone wants out, now's the time. Of course Bernard wants to run away. Don't be a tuna head, Bernard. Bernard has a lot of great abilities, and he actually is probably the easiest character to finish the game with. But he does have one downside. He's a big pansy. There's a monster in this game, the Green Tentacle, that he will not be able to get past himself. We're going to need to sideline Bernard a bit at the beginning of the game, although we do want him to get the key to the mansion, and Dave lets us know that we should maybe look for it under the doormat. Before we leave the driveway though, there is a fun sign that we can read, so we'll switch over to Bernard. And there's a lot of little flavorful things in this game if you look around for it. This sign says, Warning, trespassers will be horribly mutilated. Well, that's not good, because we're about to do a whole lot of trespassing. When you get to the front of the house, pull on the doormat, and the key will be revealed. Get the key, and then you can use it in the front door. And that will open it up. Once you use the key in the front door, it'll simply pop open, but we want to leave Bernard outside for now. Eventually, a package will be delivered, and we want to make sure that there's somebody outside to receive it. So right now, we're going to switch to Dave. Sadly, Dave has no special abilities, and he won't be able to finish the game alone. We have a special job for him. We want to take Dave inside and have him open up the door right by the grandfather clock. That will take him into the kitchen. This early in the game, Nurse Edna is hiding out at the refrigerator. So if we walk through the kitchen, don't pick up any items or anything like that, we will immediately be thrown into the dungeon. Whenever you're in the dungeon, you won't be able to get out alone. There is a loose brick on the wall that if you press it, so you use the push command, it will open the door. However, you need to have another kid standing right by the door because you won't be able to run over there fast enough. So that's Dave's job now. If anyone gets thrown into the dungeon, he can help them get out. Now that Dave is in position as our block pushing guy, we can switch over to Wendy and actually do some stuff. If we read this sign, we can see the mansion's address, but it's not actually important. You don't need to know the return address to send things through the mail, so reading that sign is totally optional. Now that Dave's in the dungeon, Edna won't bother us anymore, so we can freely explore the kitchen. Make sure to pick up the flashlight. It's an optional item, but it's very useful whenever we have to explore some dark rooms, 
although we will need batteries to power it. Luckily, there's some right here inside the refrigerator, so make sure to get the old batteries, and also pick up the can of Pepsi. The can of Pepsi is actually a fairly important item, but the rest of the stuff that you see here is not. Sadly, that chainsaw has no use in the game. It's completely out of gas. This is the dining room. There's a whole bunch of items in here as well, like a week old roast. But none of them are important, so just pass on through and open the door to the pantry. The pantry does have some important items in it. If you try to get that bottle of developer, it will fall and break on top of a grate. We don't need it for Wendy and Bernard, but if you were playing as Michael, that is something important that you'll need to do. We do want to make sure to get the fruit drinks and the glass jar. The other items here are unimportant. You'll notice there's a big yellow door here, but it's locked. We'll have to come back later. Once you have the fruit drinks and the glass jar, we can make our way out. And we see a cutscene here. It looks like Weird Ed is heading towards the kitchen, and that's exactly where we were going. So we need to move quickly. If Weird Ed catches us, it's not the end of the world. He'll just throw us in the dungeon, and Dave can help us get out. But it will be a little bit annoying, so we'd like to avoid him if possible. Hurry on through the kitchen. If he catches you here, you're probably trapped. But if he catches us in a hallway, we could duck into a room, or we can get out of the mansion, and then he won't follow us anymore. So we made it outside the mansion. Also, ducking into a room will help. He'll follow you into hallways, but he won't follow you into rooms. Unless it was a room he was going to anyway, like his own room or the kitchen. So if you want to avoid Weird Ed or Nurse Edna when they're chasing you, that's a good way to do it. Now that Ed has been avoided, we're going to go up the stairs to the second floor landing. There are two rooms that we can access here, and the one on the left is very important at this point in the game. This is the painting room. Once you get in here, make sure to get the bowl of waxed fruit. That is extremely important. And you can also pick up the paint remover. It's optional, but if you want to be able to access all of the rooms, you'll need it. It looks like the purple tentacle is the artist in the family. Once you have the bowl of wax fruit and the paint remover, we can exit and head over to the right into the music room. The music room has different uses for different characters, but Wendy's special skill is that she is a very talented writer. Whenever we find a manuscript later in the game, she can actually rewrite it and make it good. So if we turn on this TV, we can watch a very important advertisement. This guy, Mark Eater, get it, Marketer, will publish anything that we send him. So by watching this advertisement, Wendy will memorize his address. And later on, when she needs to put that address on an envelope, she'll be able to do it. Very important, make sure to watch that television. Then we're going to go back outside and just open the steel security door. Yeah, really good security on that thing, huh? It's made to look intimidating. The second floor hallway has two rooms that don't have a whole lot in them. This first one is Dr. Fred's office, and it's actually the first dark room that we've experienced, so it's a good time to try out those old batteries in the flashlight that we found in the kitchen. So just use the old batteries in the flashlight and then turn it on, and now your cursor will have a box around it and you can see where the desk lamp is. Unfortunately, the old batteries won't last long, so turn them off as soon as you're ready. And then you want to turn on that desk lamp and we'll be able to see. Once the lamp is on, open up the desk and inside we'll find the manuscript. The manuscript is only important for Wendy, but since we are playing as her, make sure to get it. Over here you can actually see there's a real skeleton and she says it's scary. <laughs> But that's it. If you're playing as any of the other characters, you don't need to go into Dr. Fred's office at all. And the second room on the second floor is the arcade. There is a late game puzzle that involves the arcade, 
but it's actually optional if you know the trick, so you don't really have to come here at all. Once you've checked out those rooms, head on up the stairs, and we're going to encounter the Green Tentacle. We've actually been preparing for the Green Tentacle. There are two items that we need to give him. The first one, and it's very important that you do this in order, give the bowl of waxed fruit to the tentacle. Then give him the fruit drinks. If you do that in that order, he'll let you through. Now, if you're playing as Bernard, this is what happens. Yep, he goes right back down the stairs. So you cannot use Bernard to get past the green tentacle. And it looks like it's time for another cutscene. We will see these cutscenes periodically throughout the game. That Skeeter Valentine looking guy is Dr. Fred Edison, and he's the main antagonist in the game. Well, at least he seems to be. He's actually being mind controlled by an evil meteor that landed in his backyard 20 years ago. Sandy says that Dave and his friends will rescue her, and that's what's going to happen. We will save Sandy, and that meteor can eat slime. We'll check back in with these guys later, but until then, it's time to get back to the game. You can actually skip these cutscenes by pressing the B button if you don't want to watch them. Now that we're back from the cutscene, that green tentacle is gone, and we can open up this door and enter the dark room. And I'm not just calling it that because it's dark. This is a room where you can develop old school photographs. Michael is the only one that can develop pictures, so this room is only useful if you're playing as him. Make your way up the stairs to the third floor. There are a lot of rooms up here on the third floor, but for now we're going to skip over the first three doors and open up the fourth one. This is Cousin Ted's room. We can tell from the sarcophagus that Cousin Ted is some kind of weird mummy, and he's also been working out, and we should too, by using his Hunkomatic machine. The Hunkomatic machine is very important. Once we've used it, we'll be able to open the garage, and we'll also be able to open the way underneath the house. I like that you can open up the sarcophagus and see that he has a little pillow and a tiny TV inside. Nice touch. Now we're going to switch over to Bernard. He's been waiting for the package to show up. It hasn't arrived yet, and a doorbell will ring whenever it does, so we can't really miss it. We're going to risk it for now and not have any characters outside because we really need to get into Weird Ed's room. And to do that, we're going to need to do a tag team approach with two kids. So we're going to take Bernard upstairs to meet Wendy. Now that the green tentacle has been taken care of, Bernard can actually get through that third floor landing and can access the very important rooms upstairs. We're going to have him meet up with Wendy in Cousin Ted's room, and whenever he gets there, he's going to use the give command to give Wendy the key. Because we're going to be doing some stuff with Bernard now, we're going to have Wendy go outside and wait for that package, and we want her to have the key just in case she would get locked outside. Of course, we could send another kid down there to open up the door to let her in, but it's much more convenient for her to have a key if she's going to be waiting outside. We're also going to have Bernard use the Hunko-Matic machine so that he can also be strong enough to open the garage door or the way underneath the house. Once we're ready, we're going to switch to Wendy and have her wait right by the door over here on the left. Then we're going to switch to Bernard. Bernard is actually going to go inside the room, so he's going to open the door and go in. Bernard is going to get caught by Weird Ed. Weird Ed actually can't catch two kids at once, so once Bernard gets thrown into the dungeon, it'll take Weird Ed a moment or two to get back to his room, and that's when we're going to get Wendy in there to loot some very important items. Weird Ed will go through this monologue and eventually he'll say, not talking, eh? Well, to the dungeon, spy. At that point, you want to position your cursor over the new kid option 
so that you can immediately choose Wendy as soon as you gain control after this cutscene. So as soon as he walks out the door, you're going to choose Wendy, and you want to very quickly walk into his room and get the hamster. So that's the first thing, get the hamster. And you don't actually need the hamster, but you need to get it so that you can get the card key, which is underneath the hamster. Then you want to open the piggy bank and get at least one dime. You can try to collect all the dimes if you want to, but you only need to get at least one out of there. And then you can try to get away. If Ed shows up, he may take you to the dungeon. It's not that big of a deal. As long as you got the card key and at least one dime, you won't have to go back in there and he won't take them from you when he sends you to the dungeon or anything, so you'll still get to keep anything that you found in his room. We definitely need to make sure that we get that package whenever it arrives, so now that we have the card key, it's time to send Wendy outside and let her wait around for that delivery. Once Wendy gets outside, we're going to switch to Bernard, and we're going to take care of some business with him. There are a number of things that we still need to do to be able to finish the game, but having the card key is one of the most important ones, so we can check that off on our list. Here's another cutscene. Whenever you see this cutscene, that means that we're actually very close to when the package is going to be delivered, so if you don't have a kid outside whenever you see this particular cutscene, make sure to get somebody out there. You will not have a lot of time between when the doorbell rings and when Weird Ed comes outside and takes the package away. If you don't intercept the package between the time that you know that it's arrived and when Weird Ed shows up, you'll probably need to go back to your last saved game. So now could be a good time to save the game as well. Now that that cutscene is ended, we are back to taking Wendy outside. And once she gets out there, you don't want to wait like right in front of the house, so we'll just head over to the right a bit. We're going to switch to Bernard. Bernard is actually in the dungeon right now, but that's convenient because we need to have him get the silver key, which is a very important item, and it's actually in the basement room, which is very easy to access from here in the dungeon. So push the loose brick, quickly switch to Bernard. You need to be right in front of the door whenever the loose brick is pushed. And when you get in this room, it's all dark. So the key is we want to walk all the way to the right. It's actually a much longer room than you may expect. And then we'll find the light switch. It's over here. So now you see what the room looks like. That's why you want to go all the way to the right first. So just keep going to the right that's where you'll find that switch. Here is the silver key, and that's the fuse box there if you ever want to turn off the power, which could cause the house to explode. Very dangerous. But if you want to do it, that's where the fuse box is. The silver key is a mandatory item no matter what kids you're playing as, so make sure to pick it up the first time you escape from the dungeon. And there's that doorbell. I told you it would be coming soon. We can switch over to Wendy, and if we head right over to the left, we should see the package. We are probably going to get interrupted by a cutscene. Yep, there it is. Weird Ed also wants the package. This means that he's going to be heading to the front door. That also means that we left Bernard in a hallway where he would go through, so he can actually get caught there, so we should switch to Bernard and have him duck into a room before he gets captured. Now we can quickly switch back to Wendy, get the package. If you're playing as Wendy, we actually only need the stamps, but if you're playing as Michael, you need the whole package, so you might as well just grab the whole package, you can get the stamps off later. If we walk away, Weird Ed will think that someone's playing a trick on him, and you'll also notice that he closes the door, so that's why we gave Wendy the key earlier just in case she needed to get back in after getting this package. We can open the package to get the stamps. So open package, the stamps fall off. If you try to actually open the package, 
you won't actually open it. That would be illegal. Because Wendy used that hunkomatic machine in Cousin Ted's room, we can now clear these bushes and open this grating, which will lead us underneath the house. Under the house, we'll find some important things. First, you see that puddle of developer fluid. That's where you would need to collect it if you were playing as Michael. But over here is where you can turn off the water, which is something that we'll be doing shortly. But for now, we're going to switch back to Bernard. We need to take care of a couple more things upstairs, so let's open up the steel security door and head back to the third floor. There are still a lot of rooms we haven't accessed up on the third floor. The second door is Nurse Edna's room. If we open up that one, you'll almost definitely be caught immediately. But the first door is safe, so we should open that one up. That is Dr. Fred's room. And that's where we're going now, so open the first door and head on in. Inside, we're going to see the radio, which Bernard can actually fix, but we don't have the item we need to fix it yet. So for now, let's just grab this dime and then head up the ladder on the left. At the top of the ladder, we'll find the green tentacles room and it doesn't seem like Bernard is afraid of him anymore for some reason. So we can go in here and pick up the record, which is an optional item, but it's very useful. And we can also get the yellow key, which is another technically optional item with this team at least, but it is another very useful item. The green tentacle is pretty mopey, he's a little sad and feels like his life isn't going anywhere. Unfortunately, we won't be able to help him out with this team, but we will if we play as Sid or Razor, so that's something that we'll do later in the video. Now that we have the yellow and silver keys, we're going to make our way back downstairs to the kitchen, and we're going to cut through the dining room and go back to the pantry. The silver key will open the big yellow door in the pantry, and that's going to lead us to the pool, which is a very important room, and it will also lead us to the garage where we'll find some other important items. Make your way down the stairs, and that first door on the left there will take us into the kitchen. So just cut on through there, and make your way to the dining room. Pass by the dining room, and we'll finally be at the pantry. Use that silver key, and it's time to get through the big yellow door. I'm not sure why we couldn't have just gone around the house if we wanted to get to the pool. But, you know, we can't go into the pool right now. The water is radioactive. But we can open the gate in the back, and because Bernard used the hunk matic machine, he'll be able to open the garage door. The first thing we're going to do is get the water faucet handle. We will need that to be able to get Nurse Edna's phone number, so if we intend to call her, that's important. We can use the yellow key in the trunk, and there we will find the tools, which we can also use to fix the phone, and we will need to be able to call Nurse Edna. Now, if you use the yellow key in the weird Edsel or in the engine, the car will blast off and go into outer space. You may want to save your game before doing this. It is fun to do, but it will completely destroy the garage, so get any items you needed out of the garage first. And if you plan on finishing the game with characters other than Bernard or Wendy, like Michael or Sid or Razor, then destroying the garage will definitely make the final moments of the game much more difficult and we'll get to that at the very end of the video. But for now, we're going to switch over to Wendy, and we're going to turn on the water valve. Turning on the water valve will empty the pool. The pool is actually cooling down a nuclear reactor, so we cannot leave the pool drained for very long. That's why the plan is to have one kid waiting by the pool 
when you have another kid go under the house and turn on that water valve. That way you can send the other kid down into the pool. They can get anything they need out of there and get out quickly so that you can turn that valve off again and refill the pool. If you take too long doing that, the house will blow up and you will get a game over. So you may want to save your game before messing around with the pool water. After this cutscene is over, we will send Bernard down into the pool. Down inside the pool, we will find a very important item. The glowing key. You will need that no matter which characters you're playing as. And we can also get this radio. If you open that radio, there's batteries inside. Now we will get switched over to this cutscene. The purple tentacle, for whatever reason, will check the fuse box whenever the pool was empty, but he does the same thing every time. Although it is annoying, he will turn off the light in the basement, so if we go in there again, we'll have to turn it on. Now you do see there's a red button down here. If you push it, that'll blow the house up as well. That's something that you'll need to consider. Once you get Bernard out of the pool, we can switch back to Wendy and we can turn off the water valve. Now, if you turn off the water valve while Bernard is still in the pool, he will die. And I bet you want to know what happens if I push the red button, don't you? All right, I'll show you. If you push the red button, that's it. Kaboom. There's actually a number of ways that you can destroy the house like this. That's just one of them. So if you turn off the power for too long, if you leave the pool empty for too long, if you enter the meteor's chamber not wearing a radiation suit and your last kid gets killed, or if uh, the timer at the end of the game would run out, any of those things will cause the house to blow up and that's an instant game over and you'll have to go back to your last save game. So yeah, don't mess around with the red button. Now that we've obtained the glowing key, the only thing that we need to do to beat the game as Bernard would be to fix the radio and call the Meteor Police. But we're going to do all the endings in this video, and we've already put a lot of work in on getting Wendy's ending, so let's do hers first. We're going to go and meet up with Bernard at the pool so that we can swap items. The glowing key will get us into the secret lab at the end of the game, so now that you have it, it may be a good idea to save. If the character that's holding the glowing key were to die, you definitely will need to reload whatever your last save was. Head over here to the pool. We're going to give Bernard a dime. He found another dime in Dr. Fred's room. And you need exactly two dimes to be able to operate the telescope in the observatory. Now we can switch over to Bernard and give Wendy the glowing key. And then we're going to switch back to Wendy. We need to use that jar that we found earlier in the pantry on the pool water. Now the pool water is radioactive, so now we have a jar full of radioactive water. We're going to take that upstairs, but as we pass through the kitchen, you may be tempted to try microwaving the jar full of radioactive water. You'll probably want to save your game before trying this. It's something that you should not do in the game, and definitely not in real life either. So put that glass jar full of radioactive water inside the microwave and let's see what happens. Let's just, uh, you know, Close the door, give it a little zap for maybe, I don't know, five seconds, ten, just warm it up. And that ought to be good. And when you open the door, radioactive steam. Whenever your characters die in this game, they are dead permanently and you lose all of their items. 
gone. So, yeah, be careful with the microwave. Let's just pass it by and take that glass full of radioactive water upstairs. So make your way to the top of the steps. We are going to head through the steel security door and go all the way to the end. There's not really anything important left in this area, so just go up through that hatch. Head up the stairs to the third floor. And this time we're going to go all the way to the end of the hall. So make your way all the way to the end. And open the door that you find there. This is the den. Inside the den, there are a few important things. First, if you have the paint remover, you can use it on the paint blotch, and you'll find a door which leads to another room. This room is called attic number two. The light switch is right around the middle there. So if you turn it on, this is not a very important room. This is where you would go to fix the wiring but you don't actually have to do that, that's optional. Back in the den, we're going to use that glass jar on the pot for plant, and suddenly it grows to a giant size. You can't climb it yet though, until you give it a Pepsi. Once you give the plant a Pepsi, it will start burping, and you'll be able to climb up and into the observatory. So to get up to the observatory, you need to give the plant a can of Pepsi and a glass jar full of radioactive water from the pool. It does not matter which order you do it in. We switched back to Bernard. Before we can get into Edna's room, we want to have Bernard fix the phones, but there's no point in fixing the phone if we don't know what phone number to call. So we are going to head back to Cousin Ted's room. The phone number for Nurse Edna is on the wall of his bathroom. So head on up through the steel security door, skip over Dr. Fred's office and the arcade, head up through the third floor landing where the green tentacle was, and make your way up to the third floor. We've been to Cousin Ted's room many times now, so of course we remember it's the fourth door from the left, not counting the one we came out of. And of course it's still open. We're going to go into the bathroom, which is through the door on the right. You may have been wondering what was in there. In the bathroom you can find the sponge. That's an important item for Michael, but not for us. So if we open up the curtain, well, there is Cousin Ted. He's blocking the number we need to read, so that's what the water faucet handles for. We can use it over here on the water faucet, and then when we turn it on, well, that's gonna make him move. Then we need to turn it off so that we can see the complete number. 2275. It's not always the same, but it is from a small set of possible numbers. We will open up the toilet here, and yes, you can open and flush the toilet. Nice Maniac Mansion, nice. Make your way through the door, and now that we have Edna's number, it's time to fix that phone. Finally. To be honest with you, fixing the phone is not very important. Do you remember the way that we got into Weird Ed's room by having one kid get captured and then the other kid was just waiting right outside the room to go in? The same thing can work on Nurse Edna. But we have the skills to fix the phones, so we're going to use them. That's why Jeff is so super useless. Bernard can fix the phones, but he also can fix radios. I'm not sure why they didn't allow Jeff to be able to fix the radio as well. Sid and Razor have the exact same set of abilities, but I'm not sure why they didn't just make a copy for Bernard. Over here we'll enter a new room, the living room, and if we open up this old-fashioned radio, we can find the radio tubes inside. 
those are going to be very important for us as Bernard. Head over here and open this door on the right. In here we'll find the library. This is another one of those dark rooms, but the lamp is right near the entrance, so turn it on and we'll be able to see. If you read this sign, it says, Staircase Out of Order. I wonder if they had planned an additional room above this one, and it ended up getting cut. If you open this loose panel, you'll find a cassette tape. It's technically an optional item for Bernard, but it's worth picking up. Say hi to Chuck the Plant, and then we can use the tools to fix the phone. Finally. Once the phone is fixed, we don't want to call Edna just yet. We want to switch over to Wendy and position her right outside of Edna's room so that we can take the maximum advantage of the short time that she'll be distracted by the phone call. Edna's room is the one right next to Weird Ed's, so right here. We'll open up the door and switch over to Bernard. It's time to make that call, so use the phone and we'll dial Edna's number, 2275. As soon as it starts dialing, we're gonna switch over to Wendy immediately and enter Edna's room. We'll hear the phone ring. Nurse Edna will be totally distracted. It'll be as if we're not even there. Now, there isn't anything too important in this room, so we can grab that small key we probably won't use it for anything, but it does have a purpose, so we might as well get it while we're here. But the main attraction is getting up this ladder so that we can go to the attic. In the attic, we can turn on the light, it's towards the middle. If you can't find it, then maybe use a flashlight. And we need to open this picture on the right wall. Until that picture has been opened and the safe has been revealed, we won't be able to see the scrawled number. Now we need to use the telescope to read it. So we're going to switch over to Bernard. In order to read the code for the safe, we need to send Bernard up to the observatory. And he's going to use those dimes. So there's a coin slot up in the observatory, and if you put a dime in, you can move the telescope left or right. We need to move the telescope right two times. So the way that we're going to do that is we'll put a dime in, we'll push the button for right, then we'll put another dime in, and we'll push the button for right a second time. That is going to line up the telescope with the room above Edna's room, and we'll be able to see through the window, and we'll get a good look at that tiny number that was written under the safe, and then we can switch over to Wendy, and we'll be able to open that safe up. So that's a lot of steps to be able to do that, but that's what we're going to do. So go up the plant. He's still burping from his Pepsi experience. And we can use that dime, the coin slots over in that blue area. So put the dime in and then you want to push the right arrow. It's rotating. Now we're going to use another dime and push that right arrow again. If you look at it when it's not on the numbers, you'll see like planets or stars and stuff. And now we can look inside the telescope. And there it is, the code is 3621. So if we switch over to Wendy, we can use the safe. So use safe. And we're going to put in 3621, and that should open it. Bam! Now we can get the envelope. Do not open the envelope. If you open the envelope, you won't be able to reseal it and use it to send anything through the mail. All you'll do is get a quarter out of it, and we don't even really need the quarter. So don't open the envelope, there's a special way we need to open it. And whenever you come down the ladder, you're going to get caught by Edna, but no big deal. 
we'll just have Dave push the loose brick, switch over to Wendy, and we will be right out of that dungeon. We're back in the basement. The purple tentacle turned off the lights a while ago, so we have to go through in the dark. But if we make our way all the way to the right, we should be able to find that light switch again. We don't need to do anything in here right now, we'll just go through the door, but it's nice to have the lights on. Head back into the kitchen. To open up the envelope, we need to use a glass jar on the faucet here, so turn on the faucet, and then use the glass jar with faucet, and that will fill it up with fresh water, so the non-radioactive kind. Then we can open up the microwave and we'll put the envelope and the glass jar both inside it. Whenever we close the microwave and turn it on, this is going to steam open the envelope. Then we can use it again. To be able to reuse the envelope, you need to put it in there with a glass jar full of non-radioactive water and microwave it on high for a couple seconds. Now you can open the envelope. And you'll be able to get the quarter, which is an optional item. But more importantly, now we have that envelope and we can use it to send that manuscript to Mark Eater. Now that we have a good envelope, we can go upstairs to the den and that's where the typewriter is. The typewriter is going to allow us to address that envelope and it will also allow us to fix the meteor's manuscript because there's a good story in there but he's not a very good writer so he needs a little help from Wendy. She's really more of an editor I guess but she's good at what she does and whenever she fixes up the meteor's manuscript Mark Eater is going to love it. That's what we need to do make your way over to the den. Whenever you get there, we're going to use the envelope with the typewriter. Because we watched that TV advertisement earlier in the game, we know the publisher's address. And now we need to use the manuscript in the typewriter as well. And Wendy will fix that sucker up. Once it's all done, use the manuscript in the envelope. And then we're going to use the stamps that we got from the package that was delivered to Weird Ed, which we still have. And we'll put them on the envelope. And now we can mail it to Mark Eater. So we need to take it outside of the house over to the mailbox. Steaming open that envelope is probably one of the most devious puzzles in this entire game. I mean, you find it inside a safe, you have to expect that there's something important inside, and so naturally you're going to want to just open it up immediately. And if you do that, you've made a big mistake that you probably won't be able to take back without starting the game over from the beginning. Yeah, that's a tough one. So we're going to head out the front door, and over on the left side is where the mailbox is. Open up the mailbox, and then we're going to use the envelope in the mailbox. And once the envelope is in there, you need to close the mailbox, and the area that you need to close it is like slightly to the right of the box. And don't forget to pull the flag, so you need to do all that stuff. Also, you don't want to be standing by the mailbox or the mailman will never come. Now we just need to kill some time and wait for the mail to get to Mark Eater. While we're waiting for Mark Eater to get back to us, we can have Bernard go get an optional but very useful item, the old rusty key. To get it, we need to use the cassette tape that we found in the loose panel in the library and we'll also need the record from the Green Tentacles room. We're going to take those to the music room, which is that one with the piano and the TV over on the second floor landing. 
so make your way down through and cut across this hallway and into the steel security door on the left. And it looks like there's a cutscene. If you don't want to watch the cutscenes, you can skip them by pressing the B button. This one actually has some pretty important information in it if you were just playing the game. First of all, it sets up that Weird Ed really cares about his hamster. That's kind of important to know. More importantly, Dr. Fred reveals that he thinks Weird Ed has his card key, and the card key is what you need to access the Meteor's room. We already got the card key from Weird Ed's room, but if we didn't know about it, that would be very helpful. These cutscenes do serve a purpose. Back at the game, we are still heading to the music room, and it's over through this door on the right. Our goal here in the music room is to make a copy of that record. But before we can do that, it looks like we're going to see another cutscene. This one is more of a warning. In a few minutes, Dr. Fred is going to be shutting down the power to the house, and that's going to make all of the interior spaces dark. That's going to make it very hard to get around. We did find that radio in the pool, so we could open it up and get the batteries out of there, and those are good batteries which will power our flashlight for a long amount of time. The best plan is actually to just stay in one place and wait for the lights to come back on. It doesn't take that long, maybe like five minutes, so you can look at your phone or go get a drink or something. But that's the best plan. When the power goes out, just stay put and wait for it to come back on. Back here in the music room, we can use the record in the Victrola and use your cassette tape in the cassette recorder. Then turn the cassette recorder on. It'll say that it's recording. And then we can turn on the Victrola, which will play a very high pitched tone. You'll see that vase break and then you'll know you can turn it off. And then you should also turn off the cassette recorder and don't forget to get the tape out of there. We need to take that tape down to the living room. There's a cassette player down there, but there's not a Victrola, so we wouldn't be able to use the record, but we can use the tape down there. We didn't actually open up the cabinet the last time we were in the living room, so we'll need to open it this time. Head over to the right and through this door. Open up the green cabinet underneath that radio. And there's that cassette player, so use our cassette tape. And then we're going to turn on the cassette player. And we know that this tone can break glass, but it's really going to wreak havoc on the living room. And once the chandelier is destroyed, you can turn it off, and we'll be able to get the old rusty key. The old rusty key is an optional item, but it's very useful. Whenever you have it, you can get out of the dungeon without pushing on that loose brick, and you can also enter the dungeon from the basement. That's actually pretty helpful. Over here we'll see a cutscene. It looks like Dr. Fred wants to play his favorite arcade game, Meteor Mess, but the power is out to the arcade. We don't actually have to fix the arcade to beat the game, but I will show you how to do it later. I'm going to give Wendy the rusty key and then we'll switch back to her. There isn't much left to do, we mostly just need to wait for Mark Eater to finally get back to us about that manuscript. It looks like the mail was taken from the mailbox, so we can hang out down here under the house while we wait for the mail to come. And eventually there will be a cutscene. Oh, a manuscript. Well, it looks like Mark Eater likes it. 
and he's going to offer the Meteor a million dollar contract. Nice. Now we have to wait for the mail again though, so it could take a while too, maybe five, six minutes for the mail to arrive after that cutscene. So I am going to speed this up. We can hang out down here underneath the house. Looks like the power went out, so we might as well just wait until the power comes back on. And then we should be able to go and collect our contract. Whenever the contract does get delivered, the doorbell will ring. That will tip you off that we can go check the mailbox. And there it is. So get the contract. Then if you read it, you can see what it's all about. Yep. It's a book publishing contract for the Meteor. Now that we have that, it's time to go to the end of the game, but the power is out, so we should just wait for the power to come on. We'll get Bernard back over here. We want to go into the basement, and to get into the basement, you need two kids to work together. One needs to push on the gargoyle that's on the right side of the stairs, but if that kid moves, the door will close. You want to have one kid push the gargoyle, and then the other kid will be able to go through the doors. Have Bernard push on that gargoyle while Wendy stands near the door. It doesn't close quickly like the one does for the dungeon. As long as Bernard doesn't move after pushing the gargoyle, the door will remain open. Now we can switch over to Wendy and make our way to the dungeon. Now of course this isn't the only way to get into the dungeon. You can certainly just go up to Edna's room, that will totally work. But if you have the old rusty key, you can use it in the door over here and head on through. Inside the dungeon, we can find the entrance to the secret lab. There it is. We need to use the glowing key to open the padlocks on the outer door. So use the glowing key in the bottom padlock, and then use it again in the top padlock. Then you'll be able to open the door. So open it up. And then there's the inner panel. Now this is the game's last puzzle. This is what they want you to do. They want you to turn off the circuit breakers, so that somebody can fix the wires up in attic number two. Anybody can fix the wires, it doesn't have to be Bernard. And if we do leave the power off for too long, the house will blow up, so you do need to worry about that. You do need to use the flashlight here, and you should use the fresh batteries that we got from the radio. If you don't use the flashlight, you won't be able to fix the wires. You'll think you fixed them, but when you turn the lights back on, you realize that they have not been fixed. Bernard was over here by the circuit breaker, and the purple tentacle will definitely catch him. Just be ready for that. They're just going to put him into the dungeon, which is like no big deal. I mean, we can get out of the dungeon easily, and the circuit breaker is right by the door. Once you're done with that, use the tools on the wires, and that will fix them. Once the wires are fixed, you need to turn the power back on, and then you need to wait for Dr. Fred to play the arcade game, Meteor Mess. So you just have to wait and wait until he plays it. And so Bernard will turn the power back on, and then it's just a waiting game. Once Dr. Fred has played Meteor Mess, here it is, there's the cutscene we were waiting for. We need to find his high score, because his high score is going to be the code to get into the inner door of the secret lab. Remember the quarter that we got inside the envelope? We can use that here in the Meteor Mess game. And if you need to play it again, look for the DFS. That's the one that's the code, so 7572. But if you need to play it again, we can use the small key that we got from Edna's room to open the coin box and then we can get our quarterback. 
once you have the code, you'll take it and you'll be able to open the inner door. We go over here, we use the inner door, we enter 7572, and we'll be able to get in. That's a whole lot of stuff you need to do, but actually it's completely optional because if you don't fix the wires and Dr. Fred never plays Meteor Mess, the code will always be four zeros. So zero, 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 zero. You don't have to do any of that stuff. And here we are. We've made it to the secret lab and we just have to get past the purple tentacle. Give the contract to the purple tentacle and he will realize that you need to see the meteor right away. Sorry I bothered you. Head through the door on the right and enter the inner lab. Once we get inside, Dr. Fred will be a bit alarmed and we can actually use the quarter on his Pepsi machine to get an ice cold can of Pepsi. Yeah, weird product placement in this game. When you use the can of Pepsi, it says, Ah. I hope they got paid a lot for that. Head over to the right and open up that locker. Don't forget to get this radiation suit. If you enter the meteor's room without it, you'll die. Then use the card key on the card slot. The door will pop open and we will be into the meteor's room. Once you're in here, turn off the switch, and Dr. Fred will be free from the Meteor's mind control. And with that, Dr. Fred is feeling much better. It looks like we finished the game. Or have we? No? No, there's one more small problem. The self-destruct sequence was initiated. The game is only going to give us two minutes to deal with the meteor before the entire house blows up. Hmm, what should we do? Well, with Wendy, it's actually just super simple. All we need to do is give the contract to the meteor. That's it. Once we get control of the game again, we're just going to choose Give. Any day now. All right. Give contract to Meteor. And that's it. A lucrative publishing contract. We don't have to do evil anymore. Isn't that nice? And that's it. We've done it. We've beaten Maniac Mansion. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Well, it looks like the Meteor's book was a big success. Now he's doing the full book tour. Talk shows, signings, appearances, all of it. Oh, uh, it must be nice. This ending is unique to Wendy, so you have to have Wendy on your team to get this one, and I think this is one of the more fun endings. It's even nice the Meteor acknowledges Wendy's input. Yeah, he couldn't have done it alone. What would this ending look like if Wendy were dead? Well, we're going to explore the other endings of Maniac Mansion, and the first alternate ending that we're going to look at is going to answer that question. So once you get the contract, make sure to give it to another character and also give away any important items that Wendy has and then, you know, bump her off. This time I left her in the bottom of the pool when we turned the water back off. So she's gone and now if we take the contract and give it to the meteor, things are going to be a little bit different at the end of the game. So we're going to use the glowing key on the bottom padlock and then the top to open the outer door. 
Once we get the outer door open, we're just going to use the code 0000 to get through the inner door. 0000. And we're going to show that contract to the purple tentacle so that he'll get out of our way. So give the contract to him. Just the same stuff that we did before. Except that this time, you know, Wendy's dead. She's buried in the front yard. And we're going to open this door. Head over. Don't forget to get the radiation suit. And then use the card key in the door. So get it. Card key. And once we get into the room with the meteor, of course, we're going to turn off the switch. So shut her down. And I'm going to speed this next part up. I mean, this scene takes forever. Feels much better now. Self-destruct sequence. And all we need to do once again is give the contract to the meteor. So give. Contract to Meteor. Alright, now it's time for ending number two. At first this ending seems to be exactly the same as the previous one. But we know it can't be completely the same. At the end of the previous ending, Wendy stepped out at the end, and right now Wendy is, how uh, should we say, sleeping with the fishes? So she can't possibly step out. The end of this one is certainly going to have to be different, so let's see what happens. Well, Wink, it feels great. It was Sandy? Maybe that makes sense. It did seem strange that the Meteor was having Dr. Fred kidnap Sandy. Like, why? But maybe if he needed her to help write his manuscript? I mean, it's not like the Meteor has hands. How did he type it? Now, the third ending is going to be completely different from those first two. This is Bernard's ending. Up here in Dr. Fred's room, we can read this poster, and that's going to give us the phone number, or I guess the radio frequency, for the Meteor Police. This time it's 1977. Then we just need to use the radio tube in the tube socket. Only Bernard can do this. And then just turn on the radio, and let's call the Meteor Police. You only want to call the Meteor Police when you are ready to beat the game. If you call them and you aren't able to open the door to the lab, it's going to be a problem. I don't know exactly how many times you can call the Meteor Police and have them show up with the door locked before they'll stop coming, but eventually they will stop coming, so don't mess around with that. These guys have been looking for the Meteor for quite some time, and they're going to be very excited that you found them. It will take them five minutes to get there in real time, so you're going to need to wait outside the lab until they show up. But remember, make sure to have that door unlocked, and as for you, keep it under light speed. At this point, I usually have a character already waiting down in the dungeon by the entrance to the secret lab, and this time it's Wendy. So we're going to have her use the glowing key to open the bottom padlock, and then the top padlock, and of course then we will use the inner security door panel, and input code 0000 to open the inner security door. But this time, we're not going to go inside. We're just going to wait right outside here for the Meteor Police to show up. 
and it's going to take five minutes of real time, so I'm going to cut ahead here in a moment. We'll also give Dave some items so that we can let Dave win this time. Any of the kids can finish the game once Bernard has fixed the radio and called the police. You'll hear a siren whenever they show up, and here they are. The meteor policeman will run right through, and he will go directly into the meteor's room. He doesn't even need the card key or anything. The purple tentacle won't hold him back. He just runs right in there. Once the meteor has been arrested, the game isn't over just yet. We still need to shut off the mind control machine. We have to get past the purple tentacle, and the way that we're going to do that is we need to pick up the badge that the meteor policeman dropped when he came through. So you see that small object there? That's the badge. So make sure to get that, and then you want to give the badge to the purple tentacle. That will let him know that you're also a member of the Meteor Police, and yeah, he won't want to mess with you then, and he'll just let you go right on through. Yeah, right, Dr. Fred made you do it. We totally believe that purple tentacle. In any case, he's going to let us through, and we just need to open the door and head on into the Meteor's room. We still need to have the card key, so we'll need to use that to get through the door. But you don't actually need to use the radiation suit this time. The meteor will kill you by shooting a radioactive spark at you, so that's why you needed the radiation suit. Because the meteor has been arrested and he isn't in the room anymore, the radiation suit is no longer necessary. Just make your way straight through. Don't forget to use the card key. Well, you can't really forget. You won't be able to get through without using it. The door will pop open. And we can finally shut off the mind control machine. Now, I have been speeding through this cutscene because it's pretty much the same every time. But it is a little bit different in this case. Well, it feels much better now. But what about the self-destruct sequence? In this case, the meteor was the one that was in control of the self-destruct sequence, and in the other endings, we had to actually do something about the meteor to stop it. But in this case, we don't have to do that. He was able to stop it himself. Pretty easy. The second half of the ending here is the same as many of the other endings that we're going to see going ahead. So this whole part with Dave and Sandy standing outside and the doctor apologizing for what happened to them is a common theme. He tells him, don't be a tune ahead. And that's it. We've completed Maniac Mansion again. Now I did mention at the beginning of the video that there was a special ending that we could only get if we had the specific team of Bernard and Wendy. So this time... What happens if you call the Meteor Police, and then instead of waiting for them to show up, we go into the lab and give the Meteor the contract? That's going to change the ending, so let's see what happens here. We use our glowing key to open the bottom padlock, and then the top padlock. And as usual, we're going to open the inner door by using it and entering code 0000. That'll take us on into the secret lab. This is an ending that I definitely didn't know about before, and it's one that I don't think I would have ever thought of. Who would think of this idea, we'll call the Meteor Police and then give the Meteor his book contract? I mean, it sounds a little bit crazy. Once again, we'll use the contract to get through the purple tentacle, and you can just press the B button to skip through the rest of this cutscene. We'll open up the door and enter the inner lab. This time we do need the radiation suit, because the meteor has not been arrested yet. 
we did call the police, but they're on their way at this point, and they're still a good five minutes out. We're definitely going to finish this before they show up. Or, at least it seems like we are. Use the card slot to pop open the door. Turn off the switch. See that spark that came out? That's the radiation that can kill you. And this always plays out the same for the most part. There's a self-destruct sequence, you can't turn it off, you gotta help me. Da, da, da. And then we just give the meteor the contract. It's going to seem fairly similar to Wendy's other endings. At least it will at first. After we look at this ending, I'm going to show you how to finish the game with Michael, and also with Sid and Razor, but the endings that we're going to get for them are not unique to those characters, they're endings that you could get with any character. I am going to show you the techniques you need to use to beat the game with those kids, but the endings that they get are not special. So let's see how this one wraps up. How does it feel to be famous instead of infamous? And there it is. The surprise appearance from the Meteor Police. That's a pretty cool one. Alright, there are only a few endings left. Let's take a look at how to win the game with Michael next. Michael's special ability is developing photographs, so you'll want to go to the pantry and knock over that bottle of developer. Also make sure to grab the fruit drinks while you're in there, you'll need them to get past the green tentacle. Up in Cousin Ted's room, we can use the hunk o -matic machine so we can open the grate and get below the house. But before we leave here, we also need to go to the bathroom and grab the sponge. So head on in there and you'll see the sponge up on the sink. Make sure to pick that up before we go down to the below the house area. Outside, we can open up the bushes and then open the grating. Easy. Underneath the house, we can use the sponge to soak up that developer. One thing that is very important when you're playing as Michael is that you must get the package that gets delivered. Always make sure that there is somebody outside to receive that package. If you don't get it, you will not be able to complete Michael's storyline. So after you see the cutscene about the doorbell ringing, you should head over and make sure you get the package ahead of Weird Ed. Don't just get the stamps, you need the whole package. You will have to have one of the other kids go to the dungeon with Weird Ed so you can explore his room as Michael. Although you can become friends with Weird Ed as Michael, he still won't let you touch the hamster or his piggy bank, and those are the two most important things in his room other than the card key but you won't be able to get it without picking up the hamster first. Have Michael go in there, quickly grab the hamster and the card key, and then open up the piggy bank if you want the dimes. You don't need them to finish the game as Michael because we'll never need to get into the safe to get that envelope. But if you want to be able to win as a different character also, you may want to grab one. Once Weird Ed shows up, he seems like he's going to take you to the dungeon, but if you give him the package, then he will suddenly become friendly with you. Even though you actually took his hamster, his card key, and some of his money. Now he wants you to find his plans. You won't be able to find the plans until you've given him the package. They just won't appear. He tells you that they've been lost somewhere. They're actually out in front of the house. They're fairly easy to find once you've given them the package. 
The thing about the commando plans is that they're actually a roll of film, and so that's where Michael comes in. You're going to go outside, and there they are, just sitting right in front of the bushes on the right. It's a roll of film, and that's the commando plans. Once you have them, you want to take it up to the dark room. You remember where the dark room is, right? It's on the third floor landing, right where the green tentacle attacks. Head up through the steel security door. And to develop the photographs, what we need is the roll of film, and we need the sponge that was soaked in the developer fluid from under the house. Those are the things that we need to get the commando plans. Open up the door to the dark room. You'll want to turn on the red light. It's not Roxanne, though. We will use the sponge. Find the sponge in your inventory. Use it in the tray. Then use the roll of film in the tray. And Michael will take care of the rest. He'll close the door, and you'll see this cutscene. Perfect. Now you can go back to Weird Ed's room and give him the roll of film. Once you've given him the roll of film, he will be ready for battle. All we need to do now is go to the dungeon and unlock the door to the secret lab. Of course, you still need the glowing key to be able to do that. He tells you to meet him there in 10 minutes, but we can meet him there much sooner. He'll show up whenever we need him. So we're gonna open the bottom padlock, then we're going to open the top padlock, and we will open up the door. Inside, of course, we only need to use the inner door and put in 0000 because we never fixed the arcade. This is where we're going to need Weird Ed's help to get past the purple tentacle. So it looks like he caught us, but... Well, maybe we should have waited for him. No, there he is. Weird Ed is here to save the day. He'll take care of Sucker Face. We need to take care of the Meteor. To beat the Meteor, of course you need to have the card key. That's important. You won't be able to get into his room. And you need to open up that locker to get the radiation suit. Same stuff that we've been doing before. This time, we don't have a contract to give to the Meteor, and we don't have the Meteor police to show up and arrest him. So, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to have to launch the Meteor into space. It is very important that whichever kid is taking the Meteor here also has the yellow key. Turn off the switch. And we'll see that all-too-familiar cutscene, which we'll just speed through. This time, the timer is going to come into play. Two minutes should give us plenty of time to launch the meteor into space, but it's not infinite time, so we can't mess around. Get the meteor, open the door on the right, and that's going to take us right to the garage. There was a cement slab in there that was covering the entrance to the lab before, but now it's open, and we can use the yellow key in the trunk, and then we want to use the meteor in the trunk. If the tools are still in there, you need to kind of go on the right side of the trunk. Then close the trunk, and use the yellow key in either the engine or the weird Edsel itself. That'll start up the engine, and send the meteor back to space where it came from. See you later, sucker. And that's it. We've beaten the game with Michael.
This is a similar scene that we saw before whenever we blew up the garage, but it's followed by this scene of the meteor flying through space. And then of course there's this scene that we've seen before as well. Now what about if we had launched the meteor into space, but Dave was dead? I wonder how this scene would play out in that case. Well, we are going to answer that question in the next segment. I'm also going to show you how to beat the game using Sid or Razor. It is important to note that Sid and Razor have the exact same ability set, so anything you can do as Razor, you can do as Sid, and vice versa. Their ability centers around being able to play the piano in the music room. Because their abilities completely overlap, I don't recommend taking a team that has both of them. For the purposes of this video, I played as Sid, just because I like his music. Now, you can't talk about Sid and Razor without talking about blowing up the hamster. The other kids aren't cruel enough to microwave a hamster, but Sid and Razor sure are. If you put the hamster in the microwave, close the door, and turn it on, you will microwave it and it will blow up. Now, I want to note that this channel does not condone violence against animals. This is just a game, but please don't put any living things in a microwave in real life. Even more disturbing, if you get the exploded bits of hamster out of the microwave, Sid says, totally awesome, which I think proves that he's a psychopath. We wanted to see what would happen if we finished the game while Dave was dead, so we're totally gonna set him up. We gave him the exploded hamster, and I told him that Weird Ed really wanted that. So we sent him up to his room, and now he's going to give the exploded hamster to Weird Ed. Weird Ed is not going to take this very well, and I don't blame the guy. If somebody blew up my beloved pet, then I may react pretty negatively as well. He's going to kill Dave. But here's the really interesting thing about it. If you get killed in this way, you can still interact with the game as a ghost. This is not normal either. Like if you die in the pool, you don't get to be a ghost. You'll see that you lost all of the items that you had when he died, but now you can actually get new items, and you can even interact with objects in the environment. I like to have a ghost maybe push the gargoyle at the stairs so that we can keep that door open to the basement. That's pretty convenient, right? If you want to beat the game as Sid, the first thing that you need to do is get that cassette tape in the library. That's going to be very important. Up in the music room, use the tape in the cassette recorder and turn it on. Then have Sid use the piano. You'll see a cutscene and he'll play a little something on the keys. You could take this cassette tape and actually mail it to Mark Eater, and he would send Sid back a contract to sign his band. But if you showed that contract to the Green Tentacle, he would get very, very upset, and he would actually kill you. So don't do that. Instead, what we're going to do is take this cassette tape out of the cassette recorder and play it on the stereo in the Green Tentacle's room. Whenever we do that, he's going to be so inspired that he'll drop a demo tape right there. Make sure to get your cassette tape afterwards. You do have to turn off the cassette recorder to be able to take it out. So turn it off and then get the tape. We're going to take it up to the green tentacle stereo. Use the cassette tape in the Mondo stereo and then turn it on and we'll see what happens. Sounds pretty good on those speakers, bro. Green Tentacle thinks that we should join his band. It doesn't seem like we agree to it, but it also seems like it's happening whether we want to or not. Now we can get the demo tape, which actually shows up in your inventory as cassette tape. 
make sure that you don't record over it. Before we can get the envelope, we need to enter Edna's room, so we're going to do a trick. If you have one person enter Edna's room, and then quickly have another kid enter Ed's room, and have the second kid get caught and thrown in the dungeon with Ed, whenever we return to Sid in Edna's room, Edna will be frozen in place. I'm not sure why this happens, but you can just do whatever you want in her room, and she won't mess with you. Pretty interesting trick. Because of this, there's really no reason to fix the phones, and even this trick isn't necessary. You could just have one kid go into Edna's room, and while she's taking that kid to the dungeon, you have the other kid go in. You'll just have a limited amount of time to work with there. When Edna is frozen, until we leave the screen, she's going to stay frozen. If you want to get the small key, which we don't actually need, that unlocks the coin box on the Meteor Mess Machine. We can go up into the attic, turn on the light, and open that picture so that we can use the telescope in the observatory to see the code. The codes for Edna's safe are not always the same, but they're always the same set of maybe four or five different possible numbers. Once again, it's 3621. We will use that code in the safe. And as usual, don't open the envelope. We need to steam it open at the microwave so that we can mail that demo tape to Mark Eater. We're going to put in 3621. And we'll get the envelope, but don't open it. Then we just need to take it to the kitchen. And we need to have the glass jar so that we can fill it with water from the sink. You can actually fill it with water from the bathroom, but it's not necessary to carry the water that far. There's a faucet right here in the kitchen. Use the glass jar in the running water, and then put it in the microwave with the envelope. When we microwave them, it will steam the envelope open so that we can open it without damaging it. So that's what we're going to do. And once we have the envelope, we need to make sure that we watched that advertisement on TV for Mark Eater. If we haven't done that yet, that's the next thing that we need to do because we won't be able to type their address until we've seen this ad. Make sure at some point when you're playing as Sid to turn on the TV in the music room. You need to see that address, 222 Skyscraper Way, or he won't be able to type it on the envelope whenever he uses the typewriter in the den. Just like we did with Wendy. And that's it. You also need the stamps from the package. You won't be able to do anything if you don't have those stamps, so make sure that somebody intercepts Weird Ed's package. And we're going to use the cassette tape in the envelope, and then we're going to use the stamps in the envelope. Then we're going to use it in the mailbox. And don't forget to close the mailbox and pull the flag. Closing the mailbox, you kind of have to do it slightly to the right of the mailbox. It's a little bit strange. Once again, a cutscene always seems to interrupt me when I'm trying to mail some mail. And we can go maybe hide inside the house somewhere or underneath, and eventually Mark Eater will get the cassette tape. Let's see what he thinks about it. Where's the play button? Come on, Mark Eater. Oh yeah, that's my jam. Okay. Wonderful. Outrageous. And awesome. Well, you know what's going to happen next. He's going to send us a contract. This time, though, we're not going to give that contract to the Meteor. And of course, you do need to wait for the contract. It takes at least five minutes to arrive. This contract is for Green Tentacle. Once you have it, you can read it and see what it says. 
Yeah, it's a recording contract for the green tentacle. <laughs> it's like I just said that. We'll take it upstairs and give it to him. Then the green tentacle will just be our best friend. And whenever we infiltrate that lab, he's going to now protect us from the purple tentacle. While the ending that we're going to get is going to be one that any kid could get, this is the way that Sid or Razor is able to get past the purple tentacle and access the inner lab. You need to make friends with Green Tentacle. And he's actually a pretty cool guy at the end of the day. Now all we have to do is get rid of that meteor. And how are we going to do that? Well, you know, use the glowing key in the outer door, open up the inner door by pressing 0000, because we haven't fixed the arcade. Same stuff that we always do. Whenever you get in there, you know, Make sure that you use the radiation suits. We get it at this point. This part's new. Just like when we befriended Weird Ed, it'll look like we're going to get thrown into the dungeon, but Green Tentacle will show up and save the day. And there he is. I like that he pops in and says, Oops. I guess that they've had a problem before about the Purple Tentacle messing with his band members, but it doesn't seem like there were more band members, were there? It's just Green Tentacle and Sid at this point. Well, maybe the other ones got eaten or something. We'll come in, go past Dr. Fred. You definitely need to have the card key or you won't be able to get into the Meteor's room. So make sure that you have that from Weird Ed's room. And whenever you use it, it's going to pop open the door. And we'll be able to flip the switch and turn off that mind control machine. Yeah, you can't hurt me with the radiation suit on. I'm surprised they didn't hide that somewhere else in the house. Alright, we're free of the mind control, but now we only have two minutes to stop the meteor. Can we do it in time? Yeah, I think so. Just like the previous time, we're going to launch the meteor into space by putting it into the back of the Weird Edsel. That's the only way that Sid or Razor can finish the game, so you need to make sure that he has the yellow key before you come over here. If you don't have the yellow key, you won't be able to turn on the car, and you might run out of time. That wouldn't be good. Yellow key in the engine, and that's it. We've done it. We've beaten the game as Sid, and anything that you saw here would also work for Razor. This part looks the same, but it's going to be the scene after this that's slightly different. Instead of Sandy standing there with Dave, well, you'll see what happens. Yep, it's Sid in a radiation suit. I would assume that it would be any character but they all look the same in the radiation suit. So whichever one launched the meteor into space while Dave was dead, I guess would be the one that's here. It seems like Dr. Fred might be able to bring him back to life though. Hey, that's pretty cool. By all means, do that. And that's it. We've beaten Maniac Mansion again. Now there is one last ending that I do want to show but before we do that, I do want to show you what happens if all of your kids get killed. There are a lot of ways you can kill off the kids. You can drown them in the pool, or you know, you can get Weird Ed to kill them. But the easiest way is probably to make them breathe in radioactive steam at the microwave. If all three kids die without blowing up the house, you get this ending. And it's a bad one.
Yeah, the rescue attempt failed, and it seems that Sandy became a zombie. Not good. So there's only one more ending that I can show you here, and this will be the very last one in the video. You remember when we blew up the garage? Well, how would we get rid of the meteor if the garage was blown up? Yep, there is another way, and that's what I'm going to show you next. Okay, so we got to the meteor, but the garage is destroyed. What do we need to do? Well, this is where that countdown is actually going to come into play. You only have two minutes to get rid of the meteor, and this time we're not going to be able to just go right outside and put it in the back of the car. Nope, it's going to be a little more difficult this time. You'll notice that the gate is open, and we can actually get into the house. If the garage has not been destroyed, the game will kind of keep you in that area so that you'll figure out that you need to use the car to get rid of the meteor. But in this case, we don't have the car as an option. So what should we do? How are we going to get rid of the meteor? Well, you'll see in a moment. We gotta take it upstairs. So head on up the stairs. And be wary of the countdown, we need to move quickly here. Go through the steel security door. And make your way past Dr. Fred's office. And the arcade. This is the last time we'll see this floor. One minute and 15 seconds left, we need to hurry. Head past the third floor landing where the green tentacle first assaulted us and go up the stairs. Our final destination is up on the third floor. Once you get up here, walk past the first door, the second, the third, and the fourth. We need to enter the last door in the hallway and enter the den. And then, give the meteor to the plant. That's right, this plant will eat just about anything, including the meteor. And that's it, we've done it. We've beaten Maniac Mansion and gotten all of the different endings. Awesome. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the final ending. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally rescue Sandy and put an end to the Meteor's nefarious plot. If it did, don't be a tuna head. Give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos. Because there will always be more cosmic fugitives to apprehend, and that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.